I'm going to share with you a little interesting challenge here. A little exhortation for you if you're saved. If you're lost, this isn't for you. Watch something else. Um, Judges chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. Uh, just kind of something the Lord's placed on my heart uh, lately. And that is, uh, as we get closer to the rapture, we're seeing the divide happen much stronger. Um, I have seen so many people that I thought were saved, and they have just right back to the world and I don't mean just carnal things and they, they struggle with I'm talking they've totally turned and gone and just they're in the false movements let me show you something here just as a little bit of a um, instruction in righteousness if you will this isn't doctrine for Christians today but there's some instruction in righteousness I thought this was interesting Judges chapter 7 verse 1 then Jerub, Jerubbaal uh, who is Gideon and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the wall of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with uh, thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. thought that was rather interesting. There's too many professing Christians today. Why? Because a lot of them say that their own hand has saved them. They aren't uh, relying on the Lord to save them. It's their own belief or their some little magic prayer that they've prayed or whatever else. It's not a, there's no supernatural thing that happens in their salvation. That's why they don't believe in a changed life. Verse 3, Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and they returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained tw uh, ten thousand. So in other words, there was thirty-two thousand people there initially. And he says, hey, if you're afraid, return. Uh, kind of interesting, too, too, because you have the, the thing of modern Christianity. A lot of these people, they pretended to be Bible-believing Christians until the churches started doing all this wicked worldly stuff. And it's, you know, and hey, movies are fine now, and... You know, all this other stuff is fine. Rock music, we, we played in church. It's fine. What did they do? They left right back to the, to the lost world. Verse 4, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them there, uh, try them for thee there, excuse me, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set be by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth knees upon his knees, or boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. And the people took victuals in their hand, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. I just kind of thought that was interesting, because we're seeing the same thing. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, I mean, this world is getting really weird. I mean, it's just like, it's just going really crazy. And, you know, there's people that, that you know, you probably have, have Christian, professing Christian relatives or people that you've known professing Christians. And it's just like they're going off in a completely different direction. And you're going like, okay, what's going on here? I thought years ago that they were saved. I'm looking at them now and I'm going... You know, where's the conviction? I mean, they're just going right along with the course of the world. And as Bible believers, we're going, you know, this world is so bad. And they're going, oh, I don't know, it's not that bad. It's just like, what? <laughs> you know, well, what's going on? Well, the Lord was getting an army ready that would fight against the Midianites back there in the book of Judges, chapter 7. Judges, chapter 7. Hmm. Interesting number, if you know about the Revelation studies. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me. And, you know, I'm not trying to tie in that there's only going to be 300 people that go up with the rapture, living saints. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is it's just like, you know, there's an army there 
that God's preparing. And as Christians, we come back as an army. Revelation chapter 19. And uh, it's just, just, you know, I just wanted to say this as just kind of an encouragement to you out there. And, and uh, there aren't going to be that many people that are genuinely saved and that are going up. Okay. <laughs> um, not because I don't want that. You know, I don't want to have some kind of special little thing that only, you know, the people that I like or something are going to go up. No, not at all. It's, uh, there are a lot of people that played the game for a long time. But you see now that Christianity is becoming very controversial and you have all these groups of people that are trying to make Christianity illegal and, and uh, go after those of us that believe the King James Bible. Um, all of a sudden there's a lot of professing Christians that are kind of backing away and saying, I don't know if I really want to you know, be part of this anymore. <laughs> you know? Just thought that was an interesting little tie in there. Uh, how the Lord will do things and... and you know, the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't believe in a split rap, rapture that Christians that are carnal will stay and Christians that are spiritual will go. <laughs> I don't believe in that. Uh, I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to say by this. I'm just simply saying that, uh, you know, you could, you could fake Christianity in the past. Uh, the, the world wasn't that bad. But as time goes on, um, the fake Christians are going to start to drop like flies. And uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see that separation happening. And it's not the separation of the wheat and the tares either, you know, again there. I mean, there's some instruction in righteousness there. But um, we're seeing this thing happening. And uh, the genuinely saved is actually a very, very small number. I don't think it's going to be, you know, I used to pass out these things from Peter Ruckman, uh, millions disappear, you know. I don't think it's going to be millions. I really don't. Um, I think maybe uh, thousands disappear, a couple hundred thousand, maybe, uh, as things get worse and worse and worse. And, you know, you just see, I mean, I see so many people and it's just like they really don't see any problem with the way things are going in the world or other than just secular things or whatever. And I'm going, you know, what in the world? So just wanted to share that uh, just as a little bit of an encouragement. If you are one of the 300 quote unquote understanding what I'm saying spiritually here. If you're one of those uh, soldiers and you know, think about what they're doing too. You know, there's ones that are they're bending down on their knees and they're putting their face down to the water and they're drinking and things. But you have those ones that get down and they just kind of get the water in their hand and they're going like this and they're and they're drinking the water out of their hand and they put it back in and they're going like this. What are they doing? They're vigilant. Okay? In season, out of season, you see? There's no, well, we're in a peaceful area here, so I can just kind of take it easy and, you know, just do whatever. Uh-uh. As a Christian, you need to be watching. You need to be in the Word, you know, the water of the Word, you know. And you need to constantly be looking at this book. And every day, you don't ever take a break from this book. You don't ever put this book down and say, ah, it's, I'll get back to it some other time. It's a good read. It really is. But i got other stuff to do. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You hold on to that book. This book is a part of your life. You know, I mean, every day we don't eat a thing before we read the Bible passage for the for the morning. You know, and then we talk about Scripture the whole way through. We're listening to preaching this morning while eating, you know, our meal, uh, you know, breakfast meal. Um, the Bible needs to be at the forefront. This is the most important thing in your life. Okay, you see, you're uh, have the water in your hands and you're feeding on it as you're looking around at the world don't quit brethren don't give up don't don't be i mean it's discouraging i, I know that but uh don't get to discouraged to the point where you just say i oh, you know forget it i just i can't do this anymore don't do that um keep an eye on the world but you always keep that book in your hand. All right. Just wanted to say that as an encouragement. Thank you for watching. And uh, let's pray for each other. Hold each other up. Uh, not much time left. Okay. See you in the next video.